Hi, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer. And I know you may be thinking, well, you talk about romantic relationships. Yes, but I also talk about family, friendship, business relationships, relationships with yourself, God, and your money. And this series, Moments of Inspiration and Prayer, um, helps us to get a better relationship with God. And so I hope you enjoyed this portion of my Tony Henderson Mayers page. And without further ado, here is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. Uh, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur, known as Wise Courtship all over social media because of my book with a three-step system that will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And this is Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer, where we come together to read God's Word, to um Pray for your concerns and to give you some encouragement as you go out of the door. So I want to thank each and every one of you who are watching me on various streams. Um, you're watching me on Twitch and Twitter and Periscope, soon to be on Haps TV. Well, I'm on now, but not broadcasting this. And uh, YouTube, so make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And also, some of you are watching me via my website, which is, uh, let me see if I can get it up here, www, oops, <laughs> this is not the website, which is www.wisecourtship.com. And thank you guys so much for doing that. And those who are listening to me via the Wise Courtship devotional podcast, thank you so much. You're watching, listening to me on iTunes and Radio Public and Apple and so many pl platforms, so many platforms. Good to listen. It's good that you're listening to me. And I'm, I'm knowing that you listening to me, if that makes sense. <laughs> I'm going to greet everyone who's coming into the, the chat in a moment. But thank you guys so much for watching and um, just being with me all year long. Now, we will be doing something a little different going into the new year. I'm not sure if I'm going to be streaming with this same platform or if I'm going to be streaming via Haps TV. And I want to thank everyone over there at Haps for being so supportive. And that's how you follow me on Haps TV. Just put it exactly the way you see it in your web browser and you will get there, honey. Yes, you will. So uh, with that being said, <laughs> I want to greet those who are watching us uh, live. So let's see who's in here. Uh, hey, Tracy, good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. She's watching us via Facebook Live. Thank you so much for tuning in. Judy, I see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And listen, by the way, if you're watching us via Facebook, you can share by touching right down there. Yes. Share that onto your timeline. You can invite individual people into the broadcast or you can start a watch party. And if you're watching me via Periscope, you can share by touching down there too. You can tweet it out to all of your followers. You can share it with all of your followers and you can put it on Facebook too as well. And of course, if you're watching via YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe channel. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> and so let's move on to our lesson for today because I'm not going to really be before you long, okay? Because today we're going to talk about how to move forward. And so I'm just going to be encouraging you uh, in this broadcast with just various scriptures, okay? About seven, seven of them I want to share with you. They're not long, but I want to encourage you on how to move forward because this year has been a rough one, I think, for just about everybody, okay? There's some people who 
really, you know, they soared and they did well and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I will say God has really blessed me this year. And we were still able to prosper in a pandemic, but that did not that did not shield me for the loss of friends due, due to the coronavirus. And if you lost someone this year, please put it in the chat box from sickness. If you know someone in your family that's sick or your friends and loved ones are sick, that did not stop me from having friends that were sick, getting sick myself. My son, of course, you know, had the coronavirus. And thank God he is healed. Um, lots of loved ones died from the coronavirus. Some are even suffering now as they watch this that are very close to me. And I am praying for you. Um, and, and, and some of us have had financial calamity. We've had to do different things. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Tracy for that. Congratulations on my television role. And I'm so excited. Uh, we did a lot of work, um, this year, but then the pandemic happened. And of course, last year. And so a lot of the things have been delayed and will be coming out in 2021. So I'm very excited about that. But um, we've had just a lot of different things happen with d different individuals. Some of us had to be pushed out of our professions or had to do our professions in a different way. Um, many of us have not been able to go into our physical churches. And it's just been so much going on. But, you know, some of us have actually been starving, have had food shortages and um no place to stay and I mean just all kinds of things but I want to encourage you on how to move forward because 2021 will soon be history and we will be marching into 2021 so there's some things I would love to share with you and so today for just a brief moment we're going to talk about how to move forward I want to share this first scripture with you so follow along with me if you can if not I have put it on the screen okay so that you can get this 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 is something I really want you to get and be encouraged by the first scripture is Philippians 3.14, and it says, I run straight toward the goal to win the prize that God's heavenly call offers in Christ Jesus. And this is so important, guys, to focus on the goal that God has before you. We are all here to run a race, not a race of competition. Because I know very often, especially here in the States, we love competing with one another and comparing ourselves to one another. But that's not it at all. We have a race to run in regards to um, spreading the gospel, of course, sharing our gifts and all of the things that God has specifically for you to do. And you need to stay super focused. Will we have to um, bereave and cry sometimes? Yes. Will we have to bury loved ones? Yes. Will we have to, you know, go uh, be among the sick, be sick ourselves? Will we have to um, deal with calamities and things that come upon us? Yes, we will have to deal with it, but don't stay there. There is a race that you have to win. There is a goal that you have before you, and you cannot allow uh, things to sidetrack you. Some things are going to have you sitting on the side a little longer because of the significance of it, you know, death of loved ones and different things. That is so significant. But somebody stepping on our toe or saying a bad word about us, we make it shake that off a little faster. And so I do understand, darlings, we are all human, human beings with human emotions. But we need to keep our eyes focused on the goal that God has before us. And don't let anything deter us from that. I want to read another scripture for you. It says Psalm 30, Psalm 33, 18 says, but the Lord watches over those who fear him, those who rely on his unfailing love. If you Fear the Lord, not saying that you're scared of him, but you reverence him, you respect him, you consult him on what you're going to do. You you high, uh, you high, take his word in high regard, what he has to say. Just like sometimes when you know those of us who have good parents or uh, grandparents or we've had a teacher or somebody we can rely on and whatever they said, their word is bond. Just like, you know, we feel like their word is solid. Well, God's word is even more solid. 
Whatever he says, he will do. And so God watches over those who fear him, who respect him, who consult him, those who rely on his unfailing love, knowing that he is a rock. When you put your trust in him, you are going to always come on top. That doesn't mean you're going to always do better than the next person. That's why we got to stop comparison, comparing ourselves. But he's always going to look out for you. And sometimes when he's looking out for you, it doesn't seem like it because it's not the route you would have taken. But God knows the right path. He can see it from the aerial view. You know, I love looking at aerial views of the land and, 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 and neighborhoods and different things like that. And the aerial view, you can see much more than if you were actually on the ground. And God can see all of those things way ahead. And so he may take you this way when you really wanted to go that way. But he can see where that road you wanted to take was going to lead. And so we've got to trust him and believe in him. Psalm 32, 8 says, I will instruct you and show you the way to go with my eye on you. I will give you counsel. God will give us counsel. He will show us the way. There are some things that happened in 2020, dear ones. We didn't know what to do. I know there were some things with me. I'm like, okay, what's next? What in the world am I going to do? But I have been taught well by my parents. And through over the years, you just learn. It comes instant to consult God about it. And as you go into 2021, if you can just come. And listen, anytime you're watching this, you may be watching this five years from now on YouTube. But let me tell you, as you cross into a new year, when you consult God, when you let, allow God to instruct you and show you the way, he will give you great counsel, the type of counsel that won't fail. And why ask other people? And you're not really sure if it's going to work out when you can ask God and it's always going to work out. So that's so, so important. All right, let's look at the next one. It says in 1 John 5, 14, and this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And that's the key, is to pray according to God's will. Because you praying that somebody will go to hell, or you praying that the person who did you wrong is going to um, you know, meet a, a catastrophic end, may not be in God's will, okay? And also, it ain't even Christian or nice, okay? <laughs> It may sound good, but it's not. It's not good. And so we have to pray according to God's will. If we pray within his will, he will hear us. OK, and so sometimes we're not too sure what it is. So we need to go to his word and find out what it is. And what's amazing is, is that we can pray a lot of things that's not in his will with super confidence. But when it comes to praying things in God's will, even when we try to pray that God wants us to live abundantly, when we, even when we see in his word that he wants us to be in good health, sometimes we get shaky on that. And it's already in his word. Don't get shaky in what's God in God's word. Get shaky on stepping out on your word. But don't ever get shaky on stepping on stepping out on God's word. Oh, this is some good stuff right here. Y'all need to share this broadcast. Listen, I just want to give you a little bit more encouragement as we go. We have two more scriptures after this one. But I want to encourage you as we go into the new year to step high because God has won. If you make it to the new year, God has wonderful, wonderful things planned for you. Proverbs 6.23 says, for this command is a lamp. This teaching is a light. And correction and instruction are the way to life. God's commands will illuminate your path. You won't get stuck there because you don't know what to do because it's so dark and it's so dreary. And I tell you, 2021, a 2020 has been dark and dreary in many instances. But there's always light if you if you open up God's word, if you consult him, he will show you where the light is. That's why some of us are just as happy, just as peaceful, while all kind of calamity is happening all around us. We are so happy and so peaceful. His teaching is is light. And listen, look at what the scripture says. Correction and instruction are the way of life. Don't ever get to the point where you cannot be corrected and you cannot be instructed. As soon as you do that, hey Stephanie, good to see you. Good to see you. As soon as you do that, when you get to the point, can't nobody tell you anything? 
Can nobody correct you? Nobody can come alongside you. You look. The Bible says, um, uh, pride, destruction comes at, uh, after pride. A destruction can come. Look. It's it's very scary to be prideful and no one can come alongside you and correct you. Um, I say this to my people in my membership, you know, as far as business is concerned, you better listen to them customers that got complaints. You better listen to those customers and people who come alongside you and say, look, this wasn't working or I didn't like this. Sometimes people say it in a nasty way and sometimes people say it in a kind way, but you have to humble yourself for correction. And so I love this word right here because we can't ever get to the point that we can't be corrected or receive instruction. We have to humble ourselves. And I'm talking about how to move forward, y'all. That's what we're talking about on today, how to move forward. And as we go into a new year, we want to make sure that we are putting some of these principles that I am reading to you right from the Word of God so that we can have a successful new year. Because you can make all kinds of resolutions all you want. You can say new year, new me, all you want. You could turn around, spin in a circle, throw a handkerchief up and catch it. You can do all of that. Speak in tongues, put so much oil on you that you slide out the front of the church door. You can do all of that and none of it work if you don't apply what God says in his word. All right, so let's go to another one. Um, Proverbs 17. I only have two more and this is one of the two. Proverbs 17, 22 says, A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit, spirit dries up the bones. And I need it. I need it, dear ones. All you who are watching me on other platforms that cannot comment on this broadcast. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to everyone who's live. I'm talking to everybody on the replay, honey. I'm talking to er everybody who's going to be watching me 10 years from now. I wanted to include this scripture right here. And the reason why is because sometimes when things are going bad, we become bitter, we become angry, we become uh, balled up. And I'm telling you, a joyful heart, as the Bible says, is good medicine. Laughter is good medicine. But when your spirit is crushed, it dries up your bones and you've got to be careful. We've had, I know, has anybody in this chat here live ever had a crushed spirit? Anybody? That's right, um, um, Stephanie. Um, Proverbs seventeen twenty two. Has anyone had a crushed spirit before? Anybody been hurt before? I know what that's like. And you cannot, if you're going to move forward, we're talking about how to move forward, that guys. If you're going to move forward, you're gonna to have to leave some of those things behind. Matter of fact, I suggest you leave it all behind. I suggest you focus moving forward because if you keep all of that animosity if you keep all of that hurt if you keep all of that stuff within you and don't learn how to be more joyful don't uh, don't allow laughter to come into your house your life how are you going to heal the bible says it's good medicine and if you haven't taken your medicine yet, I suggest you take it on today so that you can clean out all of that gook and that anger and that bitterness and that malice and that, and I want to get back at you and all that. Get that out of you. Sometimes when I'm on Facebook, we can say, listen, we can say something generic, right, guys? We can say something generic on Facebook. Oh, it's a beautiful day. And you get about five people, honey. Who told you it was a beautiful day? Who do you think you are? This ain't the sun ain't for you. The sun is for this and I can't believe and we just have so much anger and bitterness that we can't even say anything generic everything is an argument everything is a fuss everything is a fight but dear ones let it go somebody put let it go in the chat box let it go let it go oh it's a delay in the comments <laughs> I'm sorry about that darling you know sometimes that's what happens on Facebook or the live streams but listen somebody say let it go in the chat box let it go. You can't take that and move forward in this new year. And I want to share one more scripture with you. I want to share one more scripture with you. And then we're going to pray, give you some encouragement and go on out the door. Job 17, 19 says, and I like this one. It says the righteous keep moving forward and those with clean hands become stronger and stronger. Listen, 
It's okay. The Bible says the righteous move forward. You can't stay in the back. You can't stay in the past. You've got to move forward. There's things that God has for you to do. And the very fact if you're st if you're staying stale and staying in one place, then that means you're not doing God's will. You got too much stuff to do. You got too much things to uh, to accomplish. You got too many lives to touch. That's right. You got to let it go and you got to move forward forward in Christ. And so that scripture is so encouraging, guys, because it tells you, look, it's okay to move forward. The righteous keep moving forward. Oh my gosh. Somebody say, keep moving. Keep moving forward. Go ahead and put that in the chat box. Keep moving forward. Look, you may have to put that in there three times. Keep moving forward and say it out loud as you type it. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Because I know sometimes things hurt so bad that you want to stay right there. You don't want to go on another step without them, without your money, without your career, without uh, without uh, attaining what you thought, without the person you thought you were going to spend your life with, but they walked out the door. But you're going to have to keep Keep moving forward and listen take it from someone who's been hurt over and over and over again I'm a witness there's a blessing in moving forward just keep moving forward and then it says and those with clean hands become stronger and stronger we're not talking about physically cleaning your hands. I know we're in a pandemic and we're used to washing our hands, and that's good. Keep doing that. But it, talking about keeping your hands clean, you know, it's, it's easy. It's easy in a hate-filled world full of racism and sexism and ageism and all types of malice against one another and com competitiveness and, and, and backstabbing. It's easy when you are in the mud pit to get mud on you. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. They talking about draining the swamp, honey. But when you drain the swamp, if you're not the swamp, if you drain the swamp, you're going to get a little swamp on you. But that's why you got to read the word because it cleanses you. It keeps your hands clean. You got to do what's right before the Lord. Oh, my God. We don't talk about that no more, guys. We've got to do what's right before the Lord. I know I'm just putting this comment up here, but I know y'all had it up here for a little bit. I'm, I'm, you just got to do what's right before the Lord. You got to be kind. Good to see you, Crystal. You got to be kind to one another. You got to be the light. And as you do those different things, as you do this, let's go back to that scripture here. As you do this. After you, as you keep moving forward and as you keep your hands clean, he will make you stronger and stronger. Some people, you know, I know you look at people in amazement. They've been through so much. They've been through, you know, a, a lot of things in their lives. And you wonder how in the world they're able to keep moving forward and how in the world they became so strong. But the Bible tells us if we keep moving forward and we keep our hands clean, we will be strong. Good to see you as well. And listen, it is so important as children of God that we keep our hands clean. We're not perfect people. Somebody say, I'm not perfect. Good to see you, Lakeisha. Say, I'm not perfect. Go ahead and put it in the chat box if you believe that. I know I'm not perfect. I can put that in there five different times. And what kills me is when people want you to be perfect and they're not perfect. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. When people want you to be perfect and they're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I make bad decisions sometimes. But in, even in all of that, you got to still try to keep your hands clean so that you can help someone else. I know we like all of this. I'm messed up. You messed up. And you can't show me nothing unless you, unless you messed up too and all that foolishness. You can show anybody anything if you got a pure heart. Oh, my gosh. Matter of fact, the Bible says how you going to get a plank out of somebody and you got a speck in yours and both of them is wood, which means what? how you going to get a speck out of their eye and you got a plank in yours, which means both of them is wood. But if I don't have that wood in my eye, <clears throat> then I sure, I sure enough can help you. Let's keep our hands clean so that people will know that we've got a pure heart. Oh, my gosh. We're not going to be perfect. We're not going to thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate that, Lakeisha. We're not going to do everything right, but let's keep those hands clean by reading the word. And when we keep those hands clean, it'll keep our heart right. Oh, my goodness. 
I wish somebody would help me here on today. Listen, if you want to move forward, that's what this lesson was all about. I've given you some scriptures that's going to help you move forward as we go into this new year. It's not always about what you write down as your resolutions. It's not always about your vision casting. And I'm going to be given, and I hope that you guys will come. It's going to be free of charge, and it's going to be on Zoom. So please look out for it on my Facebook page. And I will make it public so that those of you who are watching me um, and you don't um, are not part of my Facebook page, you can look up Tony Henderson Mayors, and you will see it. Um, we will be doing some vision casting, and that's going to be free of charge. I mean, that's great to do. You want to do a vision board. That's awesome. But if you really want to move forward, you need to get into this word and apply these scriptures that I just shared with you to help you move forward. As you can leave 2020 behind, and some of y'all like, hallelujah to the lamb. But the truth be told, we don't know what we'll face in 2021. Whenever you're watching this, if it's a new year coming, you don't know what you're going to face, but you can face it knowing that you have God in your life. And one way, let me the only way to get God into your life, I was going to say something else and then, but the only way to get God into your, your life is to have a, a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. And you have to believe, first of all, that Jesus is God's son, that he died on the cross for our sins because we are sinners. We just admitted that we do do things wrong. We're not perfect that he sent his son for our sins and that he rose again from the dead. So if you can believe all of that and you don't have a problem saying it out loud and you don't probably have a problem saying, and God, I, Jesus, I want you to come into my life and you are going to be my Lord and Savior, then you are what we call a Christian. And that's a great way to start a new year. It is an awesome way to start a new year. And so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and pray and um, go ahead and put your prayer request up now. I'm going to pray. It won't be a long prayer. And then I'm going to give you words of encouragement and then we're going to go. And I don't think I, I probably will be on HAPS TV uh, coming on live up into the new year. But this is our last broadcast of moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer for this year. And as we go into the next year, dear ones, um, I believe I'm going to be broadcasting from HAPS TV. And I'll, I'm going to try to broadcast into uh, to the Facebook and, of course, um, Periscope I can do until Periscope ends in March. Um, I'm not sure if I can do Twitch any longer. But um, I will be able to do YouTube and all of that. So if you can't get me on Facebook, you can either go to HAPS or you can go to my YouTube channel. But I'll put something on the timeline so that you can join me, join me there. I also want to say is that the Lord gave me three um, channels and I had the channel since 2019. And I didn't use them in 2019 because I felt like it wasn't really the time. So I thought that I might use it in 2020. This is just my thinking off the top of my head, yeah. And then we had <laughs> this whole pandemic. So I'm thinking that the Lord is now prepared for me to do it in 2021. But I don't know till he say the final say. But I'm saying all this to say is that I will be opening up um, broadcasting slots. So y'all tell your pastors. And we have three different types of channels but the one that I'm going to be filling first is our it's not called the church channel I'll release the name later but it will have a lot of our uh, faith-based stuff so if you have your own show or you want to tell your pastor about it whatever please uh, inbox me now because I'm going to take all my grassroots people first and then I'm going to open it up to the public later okay with that being said let's go to the Lord with prayer <laughs> Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, let me take my little link off so we can pray. Yeah, let me put my little praying up here just in case somebody come on and say, hey, Tony. And when I don't speak to them because uh, I'm praying, they, they mad. <laughs> I'm talking to Jesus. I'll talk to you after I finish talking to Jesus. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you. We lift you up, God. We magnify you. We salute you. We recognize you are the one true God, and besides you, there, there is none other. You are the maker and creator of all things, and we look to you, God. We love you. Not only for the things that you do, but because of your character, we can rely on you. We can depend on you. And you have been so good to us in this year. 
this this unpredictable year, this crazy year, this year of uncertainty, this year of the coronavirus, this year of losing loved ones and, and loved ones being sick and we sick ourselves and just so much uncertainty, but you have been faithful and God, we love you. Anybody love God? God, we honor you. We bless you on today. We lift you up and we magnify you. I wish somebody would help me worship God. We salute you, oh God. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and we love you. God, we ask that you forgive us for all of our sins. Those are the things that we have done wrong, said wrong, things that we thought about that were not right, the apprehensions that we've had for doing what you asked us to do, not having enough confidence, oh God, to walk out on, on your word and step out in faith. God, forgive us. You said that if we would uh, confess our sins, you would be faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so, God, we say we're sorry. God, we just thank you for today. Put in the chat box what you're thankful for. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for food, clothing, and shelter. We thank you for all the people who are watching all around the world, God. We thank you for this medium called Facebook and Twitch and Periscope and 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 um and Twitter, oh God, and YouTube and my website and in the in the podcast on all the various platforms. We thank you for these mediums so we can come together and to read your word and to encourage one another and to pray to you, God. We just love you. God, we thank you for our spouses and our children. We thank you for our homes. We thank you for providing for us even in this pandemic. We thank you for getting us to this present place and time in this year as we're about to cross over into a new year. God, we're so grateful. Many people didn't open up their eyes, but you kept us a little while longer, and we say thank you. Anybody thankful on today? God, we thank you, oh God, for for um, healing our bodies. We thank you, oh God, for bringing out some of our loved ones, oh God, who had the coronavirus, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for those who were able to get uh, vaccinations, and we thank you for the vaccines for our medical works. We thank you for the medical workers who've been working so diligently, even sometimes when we weren't obedient and we didn't do the things we needed to do. You kept them and used their skills and their abilities, oh God. We thank you for the um the uh the workers, the frontline workers, whether they're in grocery stores, whether they're driving trucks, oh God, whether they're um whether they're packing and stocking shelves, whether they're delivering our mail, uh, whether they're driving UPS trucks, oh God, we thank you for each and every one of them and how they provided and came through for us in this pandemic. God, some of them even getting sick themselves, some of them even losing their lives as they tried to save others. God, we're so grateful. Hallelujah. Anybody grateful on today? God, we thank you that you've given us a shelter that we can come into the house even, even if we have to go out with masks and, and protect us or we could come in and take off our mask and be there with loved ones. Some of us even home by ourselves all the day long, but you've given us things to do. You've placed things on our heart to keep us busy, oh God, and keep our hands active, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. Anybody grateful on today? God, we thank you for this year. It may not have been all that we thought it should be. Some of us have been complaining, God, but forgive us. We thank you, God, because the sun still rose every day and the moon came out at night and the stars hung themselves in various places of the sky. And God, you still provided water and food and God, a breeze and coolness and snow and rain. God, we thank you. You didn't have to do it, but you did. We don't take care of the environment, but yet you still take care of us. God, we bless you on today. If you don't want to pray to God, uh, you're going to have to wait a minute because I'm, I'm feeling something right now. I'm grateful. Anybody else grateful on today? God, we thank you for all of the accomplishments that were made this year, even in the midst of adversity. We thank you for all the graduates. They had to graduate differently, but they still graduated, God. We thank you, O oh God, for those who are even now working from home. They're working different, but they're still making an income. God, we are always just so grateful. We thank you, God. Just take a moment now to bless the Lord on today. 
Hallelujah. Go ahead and worship him in your own way. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You didn't have to do it, but you did. And we are so grateful. We're so honored. God, thank you for healing our spirits. Thank you, God. Our hearts were broken, but here we are, ready to love again. Here we are, ready to be friends again. Here we are, ready to move on in our lives. God, we are so grateful. We thought we were going to lose our mind, but you kept our minds stable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us were on operating tables, and the Lord, and the doctor had to revive us, but here we are. The car wreck didn't kill us, oh God. We thank you, God. You've been so good. Better to us than we have been to ourselves. And now, God, for anyone who was too embarrassed to put a prayer request, let me just say, I want to pray for uh, Mike Maldo, who is suffering now uh, in sickness, oh God. We still pray for the bereaved families of the Miles family, the Smith family, the Coleman family. We pray for all bereaved families who um, lost loved ones all this year. God, we pray for them in the name of Jesus. All those who are watching me even now and you're still struggling with sickness, God, we pray for you in the name of Jesus. And for those who were too embarrassed to put their prayer requests up, maybe because it was too private to share with anyone or too personal to put on a timeline, God, you know all about it. And we touch and agree right now, knowing that your answer, whether it's yes, no, or wait a minute, it's going to be better. Somebody say better. It's going to be better than anything we've ever expected. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Well, darlings, I am so encouraged by, first of all, these comments. Thank you so much for this. Thank you. Uh, Arlene, it's so good to see you on today. It's good to see you. I pray that you are well. Listen, I just want to give you guys a little bit of encouragement as we go out of the door. We talked a lot about 2020 and some people, um, you know, really had a rough time in 2020. Good to see you, Mark. Oh, my goodness. Odyssey. <laughs> a special prayer for you, darling. You know, I'm praying for you. Yes, indeed. A special prayer for you. I recognize you on today and put your name up before the Lord. That's my friend right there. <laughs> So um, anyway, I know that uh, many of you um, had a rough time this year. And some of y'all seem to my head. I'm still having a rough time. I get it. I really do. I really do get it. And um, I just want to encourage you to hang in there. And, you know, I was saying to someone, um, you know, some they were younger, but, but it wasn't just the fact that they were young. It was uh, the fact that they were going through something that I had really gone through before. And um, how many know that when you're going through something, it just seemed like, it just seemed like it's not no answers. <laughs> Anybody go through that? It just seemed like it's not going to work out. And it just seemed like, you know, your life is just going to end. Anybody going through that? But, um, you know, it just seems that way, but it's not that way. There's always an answer right around the corner. And sometimes, too, um... It seems like, and this is why sometimes people take their lives, because they don't see an answer, because they're trying to figure it out themselves. But while you're trying to figure it out, God is already, he's already got the answer, and it's already on the way. And sometimes it's just about timing, you know? And sometimes, you know, you say, well, you know, you don't know, Miss Tony, I'm about to lose the house. And nobody wants to lose the house. Nobody wants to lose the house. But I'd rather lose the house than lose my, than lose my life. Mm -hmm. I'd rather lose a house than then try to uh, try to bury one of my family members. And sometimes we have to prioritize because you can get another house. Yeah, I know that's not something that we want to hear sometimes, but we can get another one. Sometimes we just have to say, you know what? I'm going to just do the best I can and let God take care of the rest. Because some things you just can't control after a while, you know, and some things we do bring upon us and, and we just got to, we just got to weigh it out. We got to walk it out. Come on, y'all. Let's be real. Some stuff we bring upon us, ourselves and we just got to, we got to walk it out and do the best what we can while we can. But uh, sometimes things happen and we just, we don't know why they're happening. It's like, oh my gosh, all you can do is the best you can do and let God handle the rest. And if it seemed like it's about to hit rock bottom, 
I mean, you really going to the bottom? Anybody ever go to the bottom before? One thing about the bottom, you know, when you fall flat on your back, is all you can do is look up. <laughs> all you can do is look up, and all you can do is go up. So it's just up from here. Somebody who's um, flat on their back, just put in the chat box, it's up from here. <laughs> It is up from here. And so I just want to encourage you that, you know, if it's been rough, if you lost your house, you lost your car, you lost your job, you lost, and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what's next. Somebody say it's up from here. Because when you hit from your phone, when you go rock bottom and you hit it flat on your back, all you can do is go up. And that's all I can see is you going up. Huh? All I can see you do is go up. And sometimes we got to lose things. You know, I'm talking about these material things. I'm not talking about loved ones and stuff. And unless it's a person that's not supposed to be in our lives, you know, sometimes these relationships we entangle with, they're supposed to end. You know, we're going to be hurt. But when it's over, we're like, you know what? <laughs> I'm so glad that ended. <laughs> I don't know why I was so blind. I'm so glad that ended because look at what, look what I got now. Look how God has blessed me now. And some of us, we got to, um, we got to lose something for God to get us to pick up and move. He's trying to get us over here and we still clinging over there. Sometimes it takes something catastrophic for us to get in the right place. Some of us will go hap you know, happily. If the Lord say go here, we go happily. But some of us, ah, I don't know. I can't do that. And then when the bottom falls, we have no choice but to go over there. And then when we get over there, we just as happy as we could possibly be after we done gave the Lord a hard time. And so listen, 2020 is almost over. <laughs> it's almost over. And we are very unsure what's going to happen in 2021. But I will say this, if your hands is in God's hands, you're going to be all right. Because at the end of the Bible, when you flip all the way to the end, now I don't suggest you read the ending of any book. You know, you like to be surprised what the ending is in a book. But this one book, you can flip to the end, talking about the Bible. You can flip all the way to the end, to the end of Revelations. And guess what? In the end we win. Somebody put that in the chat box. In the end, we win. And that's all that matters. Well, darlings, I got to get ready to go. But I can be visited on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, Things spinning way out of control. God is still in control. He still sits on his throne. And until Jesus comes back, that's right, we got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell. Click it for me so that you will know anytime I upload a new video. Are you subscribed to the Wise Courtship Philosophy? then you need to get your Wise Courtship gear at the Wise Courtship store. Go to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship store. All the letters are lowercase. They make amazing gifts from children, adults, men and women, jewelry, hats, cell phone cases, t-shirts, and more. Represent Wise Courtship by going to bit.ly forward slash wise courtship store.